especially for rugby, the, the Georgian anthem you'll hear today. And of course, Flower of Scotland. So let's enjoy the anthems. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, please be upstanding if you can as you observe the anthems for both countries. First of all, for Georgia. Let's hand over to our commentary team for Scotland against Georgia. It's Chris Patterson and John Beaton. Well, the Georgian national rugby team called the Lelos because Lelo was the indigenous sport that was so similar to rugby that nowadays rugby's replaced it. Although a search for videos of Lelo does throw up lots of biting, fighting and ambulances. Now, this is Scotland, Scotland's forward. See the return of Ross Ford at hooker. The Grey brothers provide the boiler house and the physicality complete with an all-action back row. Harley, Wilson and Watson set scrum, though, that can win the game if it gets the upper hand. Eyes on Xander Fagerson at tight head. If there's an X-factor on the pitch, it might just come from this back division. Twelve of the team come from Glasgow or Edinburgh. Stuart Hogg, a playmaker of the highest order. A team then full of familiar faces. Greg Laidlaw off to France at the end of the season. The rugby brain that makes it all tick. Look at this Georgian pack, it's got a mean and hungry look to it. Six of them play in France, the front row unit to be reckoned with. Mamuka Gogodza, a wrecking ball as captain and open side. If the Georgians have a chance of winning today, this pack needs to subdue the Scottish eight. They destroyed the Samoans last week. The back's experienced, but maybe the team's weakness. Four play for Georgian or Russian part-time teams. Watch out for the fullback, Kiviri Kashvili's boot and breathe scrum half. Lobs and Ize, who scored a great try against Japan two weeks ago. Well, there's the benches. The Georgians, more than 200 caps on the bench. Experienced outfit, their big forwards do play in France. Plenty of the players will come off the bench to join the fray. 
And the referee, Matthew Carley of England. He'll be helped by Mathieu Reynard from France and Dan Jones of Wales, keeping an eye out for the rough stuff. TMO Simon McDowell of Ireland. So, can Scotland end the calendar year with more wins than losses? For the first time since 2010, and win two successive home games for the first time since 2013, alongside me, Chris Paxton. We are underway here in Kilmarnock. Laidlaw, long pass to midfield. Finds Russell, it's all sitting in the pocket. Backwards off white. So what it was who played on. Knock on. And here we have the first scrum, Chris Patterson. Yeah, good afternoon, John. Interesting tactics right away from, from Scotland, wasn't it? Um, big hit up by Alex DeBar in the midfield. And then it was a, a kick you often see, a high contestable kick hey, on the winger for Sean Newton to get up there, but the ball was knocked on. And this will give us an indication of what's going to happen. One step at a time. That's a piece of Jordan's formidable front row, formidable pack, actually. But Scotland, young props, over 100 caps, Hooker and Ross Ford, they'll be looking forward to this challenge. One way of taking on his team is attacking the strength. Let's see if Scotland can attack one of the Jordan strengths here. This front row of Mariasvili, Montpellier, Bregvadza, Worcester, Chilachava, Toulon. Behind them, Mikal Tadza, Montpellier, Nemzadze, Bristol. Just both of you. Then again, an all French ranked back row. Kolelesvili, Clermont, Gorgodza, and Bitsadza from Chambrien. But it's that front row unit, that loose head, Nariasvili, who will be putting the Scottish Go! scrum to test. Solid Scottish scrum. In fact, they creep ahead. Maitland off his wing. Midfield again. Up to halfway. Wilson into Ruck. Forwards round the corner. Russell. Hogg. Hogg to Seymour. Seymour down that left wing. And that's an indication of just how Vern Cotter's changed the attacking mindset of this team. Well, that's an outstanding start from Scotland, starting from the scrum. You said it was rock solid, allowed the platform are, to play from. Again, Alex Nabar took it up in the midfield, and then it's a lovely flat pass from Finn Russell to Stuart Hogg, and Tommy Seymour almost gets away, but he's tackled by to do it into touch. Back from Nim Sadza. Seymour. Quick rucking. Richie Gray. Hogg, ball in two hands, half break. Gray provides the shield, Laidlaw. Wilson. Ford. As Ferguson to Ruck. Laidlaw again. Russell. Spreading this point of attack. Watson away out of that left wing. Gogodza stranded in behind. Gray, the inside pass to his brother, Richie Gray. Scotland going through the phases. Just making this Georgian team defend. Penalty for holding on, I think it was Xander Fagerson. He took it and he was hit hard by Mika Tadze in the Montpellier second row. Number seven, first man in the ball. There's Xander Fagerson, him to put his hand up to carry and you can see what Scotland are trying to do. They're trying to be direct and get quick ball in order to free the space on the outside edge, but at that time, well, Gergodz is in there after Mika Tadzi's tackle, and the first penalty goes to the Georgians. Be really careful lifting legs if you're trying to clear players, OK? Well, that's the fullback, I think, Kiri Kasvili with the left foot, who really is uh, prolific. He scored all the points last six, week, six, all the kicks. Six, step out. Kicks ten six. points against Samoa. All six of George's points in the defeat by Scotland five years ago. Tenth successive start today, Kiri Kashvili. This uh, Georgian line has been secure. Nariasvili at the back. The hooker, Brig Vadza, has it. Kolelashvili, the number six. Another talismanic player. Start using the ball. Nemzadza joins. Use it! 
Great little break down the blind side by Lobs Aziza. That is an incredible little try. Well, that is extraordinary. It looked as though the mole was all over. Lobs Aziza, though, he had an amazing try against the Japanese. What a player. Well, I think we're just going to double check. Matthew Carley wants to double check, but there's a TMO check for Lobs Aziza to see if he has indeed touched it down. But what a finish if he has scored this try. This guy. Played in the World like Cup last year, set fire to the World Cup. Hands, and then whether there's a potential obstruction as the player comes down the channel, please. Sorry, just wanted to hear what Matthew Carley's instructions were. OK, thank you. So looking to see if the ball was knocked forward in the act of scoring and if there was any obstruction. And we'll have a look here. But this, yeah, we'll, this guy we'll is electric. The ball distribution isn't great at all from the mall. But he picks it up in the axe first. That looks like a try to me, John. I don't think the ball was knocked off at the back of the line, uh, back of the mall, sorry. Did go Godza. Was there an obstruct? Tommy Seymour, that's the allegation. This will be the angle, we can see it here. Tommy Seymour, number 11. Well, he holds out mm. his arm, which whether Lobs and Eze was past Tommy Seymour before Please. contact. Please. OK. Craig, I'm going to go back to him now. I'm going to have another look, I think. Matthew. OK. Matthew, that's all the angles. As he breaks down the blind side, Seven puts his hand out. Does he, does he grab the Scottish player? Uh, no. No? So you're happy that we can award the try? Correct. Thank you. You heard it. Happy to award the try. Gorgonza did not grab Seymour. That is a great start for the Georgians. Well, I think he did grab Seymour, but I think Seymour was already committed and was possibly past Lobs and Edzi. This may be an angle that we can see it from. Initially, what a pick up by Lobs and Edzi. This isn't what you want as a scrum half. You want the ball distributed to your hands. Well, there, that's maybe instantaneous. That's a very, very close call, but what you can't deny is the quality of the finish from the 20 year old scrum half. That's a first try to Georgia. Kaviri Kashvili then with the left boot. Let's not beat around the bush this team wants to play in the six nations they're ranked above the italians they've won the second tier competition for years six minutes gone they lead by five points he's pulled it kiri really, but that's a, that is a warning shot it across is. the Scottish rugby team's bows. Yeah, it came from that driving line, it was well managed, and then the referee demanded the ball was used. It's interesting, you see the phrase from Matthew Carley, he said, did the number seven, Georgia number seven, Gorgotti, grab Tommy Seabrook? And the TMO said, no, it's certainly contact, but did he actually grab him to the man? It was very close. Patient. Wait, wait! Back to Malaguradza. The 10 clears up Patience. out Wait, of his danger area. These two centres for the Go Georgians, Sherikadze and Mishlerize, both play Please. in France, Oriak and Agen. Number. And two of the Georgian backs play in the Saracens franchise, Lelo Saracens. Four. Taken well no. by Wilson at the back. Off comes Watson, hits Dunbar, Dunbar skips by the first tackle. tackle. Sense of urgency from the Scots. Gray has Harley. Laidlaw. Backwards play slip. Hogg is enveloped. It certainly makes for an interesting game. No, no! Dell clears. Richie Gray to Johnny Gray. Laidlaw switches it from right to left. Wilson. Wilson has Hogg. Hogg with the chip ahead. Seymour's chasing. Is it too deep? It could be a try for Seymour. We'll have to see this one again, but that's a great piece of play. <laughs> well, we're going to go to Seymour again. This is what Scotland are doing well, even though all the five points behind. Yes, but all the possession. Listen to the referee again. Yes or no, please. Thank you, we'll put the angles up now. 
It's just simply the question, is it a try? Yes or no, we'll have another look, but Tommy Seymour so electric. And did he get in the end try of yes Stuart Hogg's no. chip? Kip through. Try yes or no, we check. We'll have a look here. Good play by Scotland. Greg Laidlaw noticing the space down the blind side. Look at that loose head prop into number eight to catch and pass and draw the man. Stuart Hogg with a lovely weighted kick through in here. Yeah, for me, Tommy Seymour gets there. We'll have another look, but lovely weighted so, kick. We said beforehand. Did he touch it down? The dead ball areas are short. It had to be an accurate kick, it was. Oh. Behind the line. Now, was there any contact on the ball on the ground there? He doesn't have to have downward pressure. So He has to have contact with the ball as it's on the ground. Gregor, we're going to need to see it full speed. Go, go. I'm gonna Simon? I'm going to have, have a look, look at it full speed. Full speed. Okay, okay. It's so sharp, Tommy Seymour. And the understanding of club mates playing together, Hogg and Seymour, they knew they run out of space. And the other they angle, love Gregor. The top kick. Tommy Seymour looks in full speed like he got there. Have another look. Good awareness of where the space is in the blind side and forwards. I taking a decision, right? the space, fixing defenders. And let's have a close look. Oh. Yeah. What's okay. your call, John? Okay. Uh, Any other angle? Such me. Uh, I don't know if you can hear the TMO at home, but the TMO is asking you, for any other angles. angles. Yeah, I have uh, a decision. Go ahead. Sorry, Matthew. The director wants to show there me one more angle. There is one more angle, angle right. being shown to the TMO. Here we go. Uh, show that to me full speed, Gregor. And I can tell you the TMO wants the same angle, full speed. OK, Simon. Um, I believe the Scotland player gets there first. Does he get down with pressure? This is the last angle now. Well, they were saying that Tommy Seymour gets there first. We're looking for downward Sorry. pressure. Okay. Matthew, I, I, I see he has downward pressure. So we're awarding Ooh. the try. I have a decision. Gregor, go to yes. him. Try. Correct. You may award the try. <laughs> you see the decision that we do. It's a try. For Seymour, great play with uh, Dell. And with Wilson in the build up, then that delightful little kick ahead from Hogg. And this is the try that brings Scotland level, the little kick from Hogg. Seymour, look at the pace on the left wing, downward pressure and over the line, says the TMO. Yeah. Clear and obvious is a phrase that you look for in these circumstances. And I think both tries rightly awarded. We want to see tries, we want to see open rugby. Is what's taken that man, Greg Laidlaw, to France from the big money offer. Well, this is really good by Scotland. They've had all the possession right up until and could just after, obviously, Georgia scored their try. The only possession Georgia had was their try. Scotland haven't panicked. They go five points behind. They built the phases, executed a really good attack, finished off and scored a try. Great comeback by Scotland in the opening ten minutes. Three, six. Wait. No, Van no. Cotta has doubled the average tries per game for Scotland from 1.3 up to well over 2.5 a game. In. Scotland now scoring one tries. Way. Hogg with a long kick. Thank you. To Kaviri Kashvili, the number 15. Left footed kicker always. There he goes, Please. up and under. Hogg is under it. Takes it well. Gives it to Laidlaw. Russell sees space. Back goes Malaguradza. Right footed. Seymour just takes it off the pitch, thinks of the throw. Well, that's a great strike by that man, Malaguradza. Finn Russell found some space in the, the bottom right hand corner. Malaguradza covered over and he managed to clear from a, a tight angle right up to the, the Scotland 10 metre line. But good basic execution by Scotland, the high How ball many? catch by Stuart Hogg under pressure and the kick from, from Finn Russell. It really is a, a top quality test match so far. Forward to Richie Gray, straight back. Oh, very quick off the training field, Harley into midfield. Laidlaw has a couple of fours to screen, Wilson runs between two defenders. Ferguson with the blowout, lost the ball. 
Play on, says the referee. Advantage for the knock-on. Johnny Gray. The Georgians have hardly had the ball. Russell. Knock-on advantage over. Kaviri Kashvili. No, no, no. Russell. Wait. Thank you. Looks up, has Hogg inside him, just goes for the quick chip back. Here's the try scorer, Lobza Nidze. He's left footed, I think. No, right footed kick. Wait. Slightly no. deflected you. to Maitland. Maitland inside to Hogg. Hogg, oh, Hogg, what a break. Ford. Scotland picking holes in this Georgian defence. Laidlaw looks left, Wilson ever present so far. Laidlaw, quick ball. Johnny Gray, Ford. Tackle release! Finn Russell screaming for it, looks up, has Fagus and puts it through his hands. You pointed out in that pre-match piece Use about it. how much quicker the ball is on the artificial turf. Yeah, a number of reasons for that, and one is exactly what Scotland are doing, they're using their footwork, whenever they run straight at the Jordans, they'll hit hard, but when they put a little bit of footwork and find space, that ball is really quick. Wilson. Play it, Bond. Penalty advantage. Laidlaw thinks of taking it quickly, it uh, just slowed Off down feet. for him. Number 12. No. Off your feet. Richie Dixon, who's a great Let's analyst of Georgian rugby, was saying before, and it's going to be Interesting to see how the Georgians cope with bringing their forwards and backs into play. Well, I watched the game last week, as you see, number 12, Mitchell Lindsay just being penalised for going off his feet over the top of the ball. I watched them last week against Samoa, and the tighter the game got, they ended up 20, 16, 20 points to 16 in Georgia's favour. The tighter the game got, and as it went on, the more rugby they played. And it suggested to me that they start with the brutality up front, and then they maybe introduce that. A little bit wider balance to the game thereafter, but what the Jordans haven't had so far is possession. You have scored for the one source of possession, but Scotland are being dominant and they're making the Georgians make tackles. Good chance to subdue a Georgian pack here. The Georgians will think that they have a maybe dominance up front in most of their games here. Scotland with the driving ball. Memzadze was offside. Johnny Gray hauling his teammates up the pitch. Back comes Ferguson. Laidlaw's in there, the ball smuggled Start to the back, the constant possession, being told to use the ball now. Better defence by the Georgians, in fact, turnover ball. Break Vadza, just obstructing. You can maybe hear the Georgian commentary team beside us, they were swigging from a, a bottle of whiskey earlier on, uh, plainly enjoying the match. Good pressure by the Scottish 15. Yeah, you can see there how hard it is to take the Georgian pack on at their own game. They did well to defend that mall. Referee Kylie Bean, consistent, asking Greg Laidlaw, the Scottish going to have to use the ball when the, when the mall had stopped. Scotland. And well, I think it was Chile Chava that okay, won no the ball back. The ball. And when they cleared it to no touch, the, the kicker was under pressure, so it's another line up. opportunity for Scotland deep in a Georgian 22. Forward. Forward to Gray, familiar Maul. cry now in Scottish rugby. Maul moves forward inexorably. Good body position from Fagus and Ford at the back, just steering. He can go all the way and he keeps his head down. Go Godza reaches out. Penalty, says the uh, referee. This could be a try for Scotland from the rolling Maul. It's a penalty try. And the Scottish pack determined to subdue their much vaunted opponents. Is he reaching for a card? No, 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 go behind the line, Just behind the line. Sir. Number four, number four, Sir, it's right. number four, it's right, Sir. number four. He wants to talk to Mika Tadza, yeah. the big second row. Place for Montpellier. Thank Good you. athletic second row, but he couldn't cope with this Scottish mall. Uh, that was outstanding, wasn't it? It's over 10 metre drive, it's very seldom you see that. This is built on the back of the one 30 seconds or so before, that is hard work. But it made the Jordans defend and then the control. The ball at the back, Ross Ford has it. Axton Barr joins. So you've got forwards and backs in there. And somewhere in there, Mikatadze collapsed it cynically. Enough to give Scotland the penalty to try. And Greg Lidl chips over the conversion of and the yellow card to the giant lock. Mikatadze. 
here it is. The ball at the back, crabbing towards the sticks. That does two things. It opens up a blind side for the attack if you need it. And it gets you closer to the post. All under control. Good body height. Look, the Scottish shirts are lower in the red. And in there, somewhere, number four has collapsed that and he'll be sent to the sin bin. Good, good pressure by Scotland. Well, there's big Mika Tadza. He's already won 45, this is his 45th cap. But he's going to spend 10 minutes in the bin. Richie Gray again. And I guess Chris Patterson, what they're doing, the Scots, is saying, well, OK, you might think you have a dominant pack. We're not going back in scrums and we will maul you. And that's a great psychological boost, isn't it? If you attack a team strength and you come out on top, it really, really hurts a team psychologically. Tackle complete. Yeah. The tackle was complete. The it tackle complete. So, so Finn Russell had to let go of the ball before getting back to his feet. The tackle was complete. It's all about whether the Georgian tackler had wrapped his arms around Finn Russell. When Finn Russell's knee hits the ground, it's a good catch initially. Yeah, so Finn, the tackle's complete when the tackled player's knee hits the ground. Finn had to release that ball, get back to his feet before playing it. He doesn't miss many, John, you said it already. Kividi Kashvili is uh, winning his 98th cap today as well. Equally happy at standoff for fullback. It's a really, really good goal kicker as well. It's been a quick 17 minutes, three tries on a pitch that's very fast. Kiri Kashvili then left footed. And happily for him, through the posts, Scotland now a man up. Six points in the lead. And with Richie Gray, Johnny Gray, Ryan Wilson, Hogg and the likes of Seymour all very much in the game. Again, the kick to Todua. Ooh, what a catch. Looked like Mark Bennett up from midfield. Again, a Gray brother just ploughing up. It's Johnny Gray, looks up. There's Ross Ford in behind Ford to Russell. Russell to the little pop back inside to Wilson. Wilson struggling to get up to that five-metre line. Quick ball again from Laidlaw. Laidlaw to Watson. Scotland everywhere in this game. Back to that blindside. Hogg, Hogg spins it out. Man and ball play on, shouts the referee. Wilson into Ruck, Hogg into Ruck, Laidlaw looks up, finds Johnny Gray again, he's everywhere. Advantage. There's a penalty advantage, Laidlaw thinks of going left. Inside to Wilson, look up again to Ferguson, Ferguson's just that little use of the feet that you talked about, Chris Batts, Laidlaw again. And it's a little sneak around that short side. Laidlaw, long ball, Dunbar. Dunbar up to Maitland, Maitland, can he make it? He's wrapped up by two Georgian defenders. Great game here. Ford. Ford plows on. Greg Laidlaw is everywhere. Maitland, Maitland has a chance. Dances between a couple. Oh, what a score. It didn't look to be on, Maitland got the ball, just picked that gap between two defenders, right between them. Another fine try by the right wing. Well, it's Tommy Seymour's try, and it's got to try in under 20 minutes here, and that's all about the balance to go up to the game. Really good control of possession, and then moved it left to right, and then it wide, came back at the short side, Ross Ford almost makes the line. And then this is clever play, the no the space is in the short side, and at almost every one of those carries, we've seen a bit of footwork by that. We mean a sidestep, but never run straight at a big defender. Sean Maitland was stopped seconds before in a great tackle by Kirikashvili. That time, he got in between two defenders. He used his footwork to buy himself a little bit of space and he had the power to drive over. That's a really well-constructed, really well-finished drive by Scotland.
still a man up. That's the first quarter of this game flown by. Laidlaw <laughs> is unerringly accurate with that right foot. And I tell you, his service at the base of the scrum too, Chris Paxton, is everything this team needs. It is, it's, it's sharp, it's, it's, it's decision-making there, not to go the same way, and then two or three times in the build-up to there, it's keeping the Georgian defence guessing. It's not running at the heart of the Georgian defence where they've got numbers on their feet, really clever play. And interestingly, two wingers have scored, and there's been a penalty try for being direct. That's a good indication of the balance this got the brought to the open 20 minutes. Well, Sean Maitland scored against Argentina, and he's the man who said he thinks this Scottish team has an X factor in the likes of Russell. Hogg and uh, Jones is not playing. He's scored three tries in four games for Saracens. Quick ball again, Greg Laidler with that thought process. Russell to Seymour. Seymour knows the space. They're up against a man. They've got a man extra. Tried the offload. Richie Gray in quickly to Ruck. He's off his feet, you're off your feet. Leave it, no, no, dead. Malugu Raja trying to um, disturb Laidlaw. Little ball to Harley, big Robert Harley, all arms and legs of abrasion. Ferguson, they're just producing quick ball, Chris. And they've been direct as well. Bit of a dust up in the background, but um, oh. the dust up, by the way, still going on as uh, Finn Russell. In fact, the dust up, I can tell you, has about five people involved. Out the left to Richie Gray. Richie Gray looks up, stays on his feet. Plows up, God, God's are stranded. You can hear the crowd, they don't like what's happening off camera. Ferguson. Ferguson into his fellow back row man. He's up against that big player, Chila Chava. Bennett. Bennett. Oh, you could die. The Scots are being very, very clinical. Ferguson's are selling in the open field. Has his two front row men of Dell and Ford to help him. Russell. Russell. To Watson, I think. Maitland, well, he was on his right wing a minute ago, wrapped up by Chila Chava. No three off feet! Off feet, off feet. Laidlaw. <laughs> Ferguson. Round that left hand side. Seymour. Seymour into a wall of red bodies. Could be a Terrible ball for the uh, Georgians, who have hardly had a, an episode of possession at all. Lobza needs her back to Malaguradza. Stick Slaud is on. Wilson keeping the tempo up. Hard. Hogg between, oh, Stuart Hogg tried, just looked to get rid of that ball. Not John. Well, what a phase of play, John. What a phase of play. All started from Greg Laidlaw's quick tap. It must have been almost, or maybe even over two, over two minutes before there's been off-the-ball scuffles. There's been some wonderful attack. And Scotland are controlling this game. 90% possession. Here's off-the-ball scuffle. Ryan Wilson, Kulalashvili, and they're... Xander Fagerson and Rob Harler are doing the best to, to split up. Not a huge amount going on there, nobody wants to concede. Then Wilson gets back to his feet and Stuart Hawk just off. finds a little bit of space on the inside of Malagarazzi. Unfortunately for him, he loses the ball in this contact. But oh, no, no, it was bashed out of his hands to be fair to Stuart Hawk. Yeah. But it's 90%, Scotland have 90% yeah. possession and this will all have a big effect on the Georgians. We're going to check no some power play in the TMO orbit. I think we might be about to look at a little bit of Is it a high tackle. I yeah. thought we were going to look at the uh, foul play, but um, yeah, I, I picked that's just the straight. That wasn't a knock on by Hogg. That was, uh, I think, grabbed out of his hand. But you're right about possession. Scotland have made 65 carries. The Georgians have made six. 31 game line successes against two. Yeah, I think we're, we're fine to play there. Listen. Over here we have two players from both sides grappling with each other off the ball. That's not acceptable. Next time we'll, we stop the game and players leave. Okay? It's, it's players from... Don't put your finger up like that. It's players from both sides. We clearly saw it on the screen. Do you understand? You speak to your players? And you speak to your players? Okay. 
Just be careful, we have one over Lam Lam Lamuka. One high tackle by five there and one up there from the kickoff. Just be careful. One more yellow card. Just, be, just well, be we're careful. hearing that Murray Lowe is coming on for Scotland. Scrum. Yeah, going for Xander Fagerson, is it? He's making way. Yeah, I think you're right. But there is no tight head yeah, prop okay. there. So Xander Fagerson is off. He's having an incredibly productive game, too. And on comes That's Big right. Murray Lowe. Xander Fagerson carried a lot of ball, hasn't it? Murray Lowe comes in, he's a big Inside. experienced tight head prop as well, over the far side. Inside. I think we can see, is it Time on. the winger as well, up to Suari, the Georgian winger with his arm and a sling leaving the field. I think we've got Tiscolari on as well, number 22, so a few changes and what's been a, a frantic opening 25 minutes with a lot of quality from the Scotland players. You happy? Yeah, that's it. Crouch! Bind! I guess, as we, you know, you've got to praise Matthew Carley for being very clear, but you've got to look at Scotland's tactics of dismantling what the, the opposition would think would be their strength. Scotland have played really clever rugby, and that's ultimately what win games have been obviously hugely powerful, but they've been clever in where they've attacked. They've not gone at the strength of the Georgian defence, they've tacked them on the edges, they've used the footwork, and they've been outstanding in the set piece so far. Oh. Until now. 18 through the mark. <laughs> yeah. 18 through the mark. It's just fresh, isn't he? Manuel yeah, just off the bench, desperate to make an impact, just going too quickly off the mark. And this gives Georgia a chance to clear. Is it Sinbin Mikatadze returning? They've missed him, haven't they? He's a big athletic player. Like you, I watched the uh, Samoan game and the two second rows were good ball carries. Yeah, no Namzadze and Mikatadze. Lobza needs it. Frantic scrum half. Malaguradze at 10. Good kicker. He's trying to help. But they were frail the midfield. Yeah, they made when they a change. midfield, they were frail. Yeah, they made a change in the midfield. Uh, Mitchell Lidsey, who's a massive Seven. man Seven. in the 12 jersey, he played in the wing last week. He's maybe come in to try and shore that up a little bit. But the problem for the Georgians there was, although they, they won a free kick from the scrum, it means they, they kick it out, Scotland get more possession. Wilson, Maitland off his wing. Dunbar, it's that speed across the game line. Round the corner come that brigade of forwards. Inside ball. Ross Ford is having a oh what a what a break that is from that's his second very good break they hunt down that left side Seymour dry weather all weather pitch Watson advantage for offside another penalty coming Scotland's way long ball to Russell even longer one to Hogg Hogg sticks it through the gap chased by Dunbar it's still with them, Bar. Did he knock it on there? He did. It's going to be called back. Ten red offside. For the penalty. Ten Chris, red. here's a stat we're going to be shown. <laughs> wow, look at that. It's just all aligned to the possession. It's still 90% possession, but Georgia, 66 tackles made, 10 missed. You try and keep your, your tackle count obviously as low as possible, but look at Scotland. <laughs> tackles made, one. You wouldn't be happy with the stats. One made, three missed. A long way. You know, maybe there's a they negative and everything happy. right enough. <laughs> well, you know, yeah. there's, uh, you're missing three times as many as you're making. But, but Do you know, we're looking at Greg Laidlaw, and you think of two, three years ago when he was coming for, for criticism, wasn't he? And now he's one of the big money movers to a big club in France. And this man has been given a game plan that suits him, and then he keeps knocking the ball over the posts. Well, he's a phenomenal goal kicker, but he's, he's a clever player. He works really well with Vern Cotter as well. They have a great working relationship, and he's a leader. His leadership has grown and grown and grown, and he's small in stature, but he leads by what he says, but he also leads by his actions, and he leads by decision-making. He's been outstanding again for Scotland so far, Greg Lidlock. Tell by the crowd behind the post, they like it. The flags go up, Laidlaw jogs back, happy. 24-8. 28 minutes gone, Kilmarnock, four degrees. It's actually four degrees warmer than it is in Tbilisi in Georgia at the moment. Well, the guys beforehand were talking about Scotland needing a good start and a quick start to, to disrupt Georgia, and they've had that, but it's all been accurate. There's no point in playing quickly if you're making mistake after mistake, but 
Scotland have been clever, they've been accurate, and they well deserve the, the lead. 24 points to eight. Mall. Good drill process there. Richie Gray plucked it out the sky. Harley pumps those legs. Russell to Kaviri Kashvili. Little prodded kick, he accepts defeat. It's going to be a line out to Scotland on their own 10 metre line. Good discipline by Finn Russell. Nice little banana kick by Kaviri Kashvili, but again, it's hand in possession back to Scotland. And look at that, only six carries for Georgia. 225 metres made. Now, most of those have been sort of split across, uh, across the field as well. Richie, Johnny Gray, kind of hands, and the Fagerson carrying. But Seymour and Hogg and Maitland out wide as well. That's the balance that Scotland are bringing to the game. We've got some stats here. Hogg has made 50 metres. Ross Ford's made 30 metres. Tommy Seymour's made 27 metres. Hogg's carried the ball six times. Robert Harley, that extra pass. Out to Watson, that went backwards, no referee says it went forward. Chilla Chavez over the ball, but it's going to be a scrum to Georgia, and the puzzle for Georgia is how to stop this this game. Well, they've got two they've got two difficulties, two things they need to address. They have to try and slow Scotland's ball down, and the second one's link. If it's, if a team gets quicker ball, you're much more difficult to defend against because your defensive line can't get set, therefore you can't slow the possession down. So it either needs one enormous collision to slow it down or it needs you to work hard at the position so you can get a man over the ball. Scotland are just getting quick ball on the synthetic surface and the footwork, even there where it was a knock-on against Hamish Watson, he managed to half-beat the defender to target the space at his shoulder, keeping away from a, a, big, a big collision and a big tackle. Well, there's the uh, perfect shot for scrum aficionados. Mariashvili on this side against Murray Lowe. And the Georgians will fancy this. This is what they're good at. This is how they demolished Samoa. Looking for the penalty try, they've got it. That's the first statement they've been able to make. That's what you and I watched last week against Samoa. They destroyed Samoa. Six. They did. And it just shows you... As you listen to the referee, it's penalising Rob Harley as he detached his bind. Yeah, uh, his, his shoulder has to be bound to the scrum, but the scrum was moving forward anyway. It was a it was a dominant scrum as you can see, and you're right, they did do that to Samoa. They got a penalty try and scored a try from the scrum last week, and it just shows you if you get your technique slightly wrong from Scotland's point of view or slightly right or, or, or accurate from Georgia's point of view, it can have a massive knock-on effect. Well, here's Kiviri Kashvili again, trying to get some points on the board. But just to go back to that scrum, it's, it, you know, these are good players. M Nariashvili is the loose head from Montpellier. The tight head, Chila Chavez, too long. Behind them, Kolesh Leshvili from Claremont. Gogodza from Toulon. Mikhail Tadza from Montpellier. They're all top French players, but the back division is where they seem to be letting in points. Good crowd here in Kilmarnock. Almost a sellout. Lovely day. Kaviri Kashvili left footed and assured and uh, goes between the posts. Yeah, positive for George well, Wayne. Well, well, points in the turn from their possession. They've only had three or four possessions. They've scored a good try. They've kicked a couple of penalties when they have had possession. So they deserve the 11 points because they haven't had control of the ball at all. Keeps them in the game. Todua to Wilson. Wilson has the names of his children on those little bands around his wrists. Cruel kick from Finn Russell. Slip, did that go forward? Right footed. Seymour, Seymour will look up. He's got Hogg inside him. He goes himself. Compton slips. Scotland's ball though. Laidlaw to Dell. Dell smashes into this uh, all-action wing forward, Colin Lishvili. Russell, Russell to Hogg. Every time Hogg gets the ball, you feel the crowd take a little intake of breath. Laidlaw gets to almost every one of these rucks. Johnny Gray. Quick possession, Richie Gray, of course. The other Richie Gray, the, uh, the possession contact coach, will be happy with much of this, but that's a turnover, great turnover. Will this go quickly out? Here's the big number for Mikhail Tadza. 
Mikhail Tadza makes five or six meters. Lobza needs her. Tordua. Tordua held up. Lobza needs her. To the number eight, Bitsadza. Bitsadza held up by Watson. Looking for the turnover ball. Kaviri Kashvili in from 15 to 10. Long speculative kick ahead. Mitchell leads it. Finn Russell. Hogg. This all where the pitch certainly produces a type of game that we like. Oh, Stuart Hogg, that was sheer genius. That was sheer genius. The kick. He followed it. He caught it and Hogg. Well, if you're talking X Factor, this man has it. Well, that's my answer at all, doesn't it? Stuart Hogg, he was in the right place. And then Sophie to the see the new and Georgia were up flat in the line, a little bit of space in behind. He was fortunate with the fans, but just for you to have a look at Ruta, look how sharp Stuart Hogg is and his perception and his speed onto the ball. Here he can have a look, he's looking at the nose where the space is, carries it to the line, and then watch this reaction, as quick as a flash onto the ball. And he's got the pace, all the pace in the world, to score his 12th try for Scotland. He is one of these players with... There aren't many weaknesses, are there? You always think a player's got speed or Thank hands you. and maybe can't tackle, but he can kick, he can run, he's got vision, he's got confidence, and look at that score. Yeah. He's threatened Georgia every time he's had the ball. He's kicked when he had to kick. He's, he's developed his game, and that's a much more mature Stuart Hogg. In the years gone by, maybe you'd have seen him try and take that on when it wasn't on. When he got the ball there, he looked up, he knew where the space was, he was calm and composed, and then just came alive to finish off. Fantastic individual score. The cold breath of winter from Greg Laidlaw's lungs. He'll be calming his brain down. One step, two, three, four, kick. Difficult, difficult, difficult kick made to look easy by Greg Laidlaw. We're going to have another look at this. The kick comes through, and Finn Russell picks up the ball initially, fires it a long ball to Stuart Hogg. And then there's the awareness of space. He knows exactly what he's going to do. And between three Georgian, four Georgian players, Sherlock Max out there, and that's a great feeling. Running in, unopposed, for a try for your country. He didn't hesitate, did he? The three Georgians hesitated, and he kept going. Fortune favours the ball. And this is an area that's improved from last week, and, 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 and indeed the week before, dealing with the restart. Vern Cotter will be happy with that. They've, they've dealt with every restart comfortably. They've launched attacks and they're winning penalties as well. So I'll keep Vern Cotter very happy. Well, it has been an extraordinary game already. And Vern Cotter, as Andy Nichol was saying, has more games to go in the Six Nations. But after this, he's off. And to be fair, he has made this team perform. He has. World-class coaches do that. He's got good players to work with. He's a good meters. coach himself. Jason O'Halloran, Matt over. Taylor, his assistant coaches as well. Practice move. Wilson, it was. Please move. Stay down, stay down. Watson took it left. Another little training ground move. Johnny Gray out to Harley. Harley hits up. Scotland, middle of the pitch is what they like. Bennett. It's going like clockwork so far. Johnny Gray. Johnny Gray between two players tackled by God Godza. Thank you. Ford. It is almost that three-point attack. Laidlaw. Russell. Russell looks short. Oh, Wilson came onto that one hard right into Mishadlidza. Shorter ball to Ford. Continuity from Scotland to Russell. Russell in behind, Hogg, Hogg looks out long to Seymour. Good defending by Nimsadza. It's been turned over by the Georgians. Kaviri Kashvili's in the pocket. Lobza needs up, gives it to the pack of fours. To the big loose head, Nariashvili. Use it! 
And at the moment, all Georgia can do is just clear their lines. Thank you. It's good to see the kick being put under pressure from a Scottish point of view. Obviously disappointed with the turnover. But Malagaradze is under pressure from Stuart Hogg that time, Mark Bennett as well. And just that final five. phase, Georgia just cannot slow well, Scotland's ball down. Okay. They can win it in a turnover when they've won maybe two or three turnovers, but other than that, they're not slowing Scotland's ball down, and Scotland's attack has as much a fact in that than the Georgians' defence. It's been outstanding so far. Well, we're looking at statistics that you can't see at home, but Scotland have made 335 metres running the ball. The Georgians have made 57. Scots have made a total of eight tackles. The Georgians have made 100. It's part of the ball, no problem. Good mall defence that time. You can hear referee Matthew Kyler saying that Hamish Watson was pulled back into the mall as he was trying to get away, but the player, I'm not sure who it was, who made the tackle was already part of the mall, so he could do that. And George is now have another look at the scrum. The last one was, was dominant. You see Xander Fagerson's come back onto the field for Murray Low. It must have been a head injury assessment or possibly a blood injury there. We'll see how this one goes. The only area the Georgians might be pleased with is the set scrum because they had one penalty from that, but otherwise they've been struggling. Mariashvili giving it some lip. Listen, well, that is half time. A one hour 40 minutes we've had here. We've had tries, we've had a punch up, we've had a yellow card, and we've had a Scottish team rampant. Chris Kenny. Patterson. Yeah, absolutely. The back three, the much loaded back three, Scotland have all come up with tries. Stuart Hogg in your picture there, Tommy Seymour, Sean Mayton, the penalty try as well, four tries for Scotland in the first half, but these guys, the pack, have worked really, really hard to put them in good positions. Vern Cotter and the coaching staff will be very, very happy with the opening 40 minutes here at Rugby Park. OK, thanks, Chris. It's uh, Scotland 31, Georgia 11. Well, there's Stuart Hogg. He's had quite a day, he's had nine carries, he's made 97 metres. The top carrier though so far, Ryan Wilson with 11. He's made 26 metres, Tommy Seymour's made 60 metres with 10. 86% possession for Scotland. 335 metres made. Georgia have it all to do. Mikhail Tadza. This is the uh, abrasive Claremont wing forward, Kole Leshvili, big number six. Lobzaniza at nine, right footed. Up to Wilson. One man clear out from Richie Gray, leaves lots of bodies around. Finn Russell got that long pass to Hogg. I think Hogg likes this surface. Seymour, Seymour off his left foot into a couple of high tackles. He'll be desperate to get to ground. Uh, they help him to do so. Laidlaw, long one to Russell. Russell to Fagerson. That's Fagerson's ninth carry. Comes left again. There's a Georgian down. Hogg might exploit it to Seymour back inside to Hogg. Hogg flips it inside to Watson. Little kick ahead from Mark Bennett. Claims to have been obstructed. Back goes Kviri Kashvili. And it is a penalty. Just a penalty. He's saying there's plenty of Georgian players there. Greg Laidlaw, Mark Bennett are asking the question. Was it a penalty try? Bit more of the same at the start of the second half, isn't it? As there's a stop, there's an injury, I think. To one of the it's a Georgian player. It's more of the same. The Scotland looking really sharp in counter attack, and the Georgians just hanging on in defence. They could have could have been more aggressive here. Sure Sorry, there's the one before this. This is good play, keeping the, okay, keeping the ball alive, keeping the ball in field. Ball kicked through, and then there's a slight.
cruel on Mark Bennis Jez. I think it's quite right to give a penalty. He did interfere, but no question okay, it wasn't a penalty second, try at second. all. Skills by Seymour and Hogg. He was ever so slightly pulled back by Nemzadze. Thought about squaring up and then thought better of it. And let the referee deal with it. Hamish Watson's playing a good linking role, isn't he? Usually on the left side. Hamish Watson is, a, is an outstanding player. He's almost... He, he plays much bigger and more powerful than he looks. He's a hugely strong player for a really, relatively small frame in comparison to the Jordans, but he's so good over the ball um, in defence that we've not seen today because Scotland haven't had to defend. But he's destructive as a ball carrier. He can badge through players, he can beat players, he can win turnovers. Spent a lot of time in the seventh circuit as well, so he's explosive, he's quick. And I think he's had an absolutely outstanding series um, in the autumn test for Scotland. John Hardy obviously injured. John Barkley was outstanding in the first two games. He's on the bench today. Lots of options in the back row. Well, there's big Mika Tadza. I think he's off to have a, maybe a head knock assessment. HIA, we can hear it in the background, so he's off just to get checked. Send him on, please. And this is interesting for Georgia because I think there's a lot of talk about them wanting to get into the Six Nations and expand the Six Nations. I think they almost deserve that chance, but where they, that competition would test you more than anything else is in your depth of squad. So when they lose big players like Mika Tadze, Montpellier, like second row, and if they did pick up injuries, what's their depth like and can it compete? Again, that safe ball to Big Richie Gray. Ferguson round the corner, Watson, Watson just smashes his way over. Straight off the training ground, sneaky little line-out move, brilliant execution, and Watson backs up a display with a try at the top drawer. <laughs> He's got the biggest smile on his face, look at that, so proud, delighted with his score. And this is really, really clever play. It's thrown to the middle line, a pre-arranged move, where they then shoot back down the, 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 the front of the line and here's a great take by Richie Gray and the players know exactly what's happening look at the timing of Hamish Watson and we just said as a ball carrier it's very difficult to stop and he blasts through two tackles the Georgians are expecting a drive here and Xander Ferguson slips the ball to Hamish Watson and here's the power through the contact that we spoke about just a minute before still had a lot to do didn't he to make the line this is Scotland's fifth try. Hamish Watson was doing corporate hospitality at the start of this year and now very much in the plans for the Six Nations, you would think. Greg Laidlaw then. And again, it's almost metronomic. Reliability, just a steady run up, and that's what's made him such a valuable player. But there's the man of the moment, picked out in the pre match analysis. Arch ball carrier, great over the ball, and now scoring tries. Hamish Watson, good decision and line out call as well, wasn't it? To dummy the drive, and then instead of most peels go around the tail of a line out, this one came around the front, well executed, and a good score. Russell. Three, wait, 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 thank you, thank you, now you're fine. Kviri Kashvili. Little chip and chase, Laidlaw's in the pocket. Good knock back though. Todua off the left wing, stays up. Well, good aggression from the Georgian. Finn Russell just helps to delay it. Nani Ashvili, the loose head prop. This is the big replacement. Lomidze, the Bezier second row player. Hooker, break Vadza, enveloped. Lobza needs a bit more possession now for the Georgians. Kirikashvili playing at 10. Lobza needs it. Extra little roll from the number eight. Bitsadza. Better play by the Georgians. Lobzide again. Off the bench and in possession. Nariashvili. Helped by Shari Kadze, the centre. 
It was Malagarudzadze, the uh, number 10, Lobzidne Zidza. Penalty advantage to the uh, Georgians. They try the little kick ahead, they'll take the penalty. Better play by Georgia. Well, that must be the first time they've got right, near so 10 phases, eight or nine phases there for the Georgians. And when they have had possession, they've had good return in terms of points. Scotland penalised for not rolling away the breakdown. You can see Ryan Wilson making the tackle, he's pinned in there, isn't he, by Chile Chalva. But he still has to make a, a, a better effort at moving away. There's no, not, <laughs> it's not very far he can go, but he has to try and wriggle and fight and prove to the referee that he's getting out of there. Big Johnny Gray going off the pitch, pointing to his uh, ankle, I think. <laughs> And maybe Rob Harley's going to go to second row because we can see John Bartley getting ready to come on. Yeah, Johnny Gray looks like maybe a problem with his boot. It doesn't look injured at all. Studs, studs. lost the stud. One of the players needs a new boot. He put some amount of work in Johnny Gray, doesn't he? Phenomenal ball carrier, tackler, leader. He's invaluable with his big brother Richie in the second row for Scotland. True world-class second-row partnership, in my opinion. Tilashvili is on for Kolelashvili, the, the abrasive number six. Georgia then with their first chance, really, to get close to the Scottish line. The uh, mall. That front row of Nariashvili, Breg Vadza and Tilachava very much in there. God God's at the back. The big number seven, God Godzilla, he was called. It's been turned over though, that's a brilliant piece of work. Scotland with the ball inside their own danger area. Russell kicks it long, Todua chases back, he has Kiriashvili with him. Kiriashvili left-handed, offloads it inside to Siklauri. Siklauri half through, Georgia with a bit more zip. Remember they're playing to get into the Six Nations, they're ranked above the Italians. As we speak. Another turnover, this time by Dell, he's had a good game. It was both by Dell, it was him that got the one seconds before as well, in the mall. Width, Laidlaw, Dunbar, Seymour, caught in traffic. The nine. Tackle the nine. Frustration from Sharakadze, he can't play the nine at all. Greg Lidlow being wrestled to the ground before he picked the ball to play it away from the former ruck. I think Scotland can be more direct here and straighten up and fix the man before moving the pass. They're playing a little bit in front of the Georgians now. Their success in the first half came from that really dynamic footwork and finding the spaces in beside in between the defenders. And there you see Shara Kadze all over Greg Lidlow. Time off, time off, replacement. Well, there's John Barkley on for Six replacement. Big Rob Harley and Barkley. You know, he can play all three back row positions, can't he? He can play six, all seven, eight. And he can play them all very, all very well. I thought it was outstanding like in the open two games against Argentina and Australia, okay. as you see. Johnny Gray's 19. studs a bit longer than they were in your day, John. Or maybe shorter. shorter. <laughs> <laughs> Defense of the referee <laughs> saw them. Yeah. yeah, but going back to John Barkley, he... He, he's outstanding, he can carry the ball, he can link. He's, I think the, the, the biggest improvements he's made in the game, his game in the last two years is his, his link in play. He's now a real threat in attack. When he came through at first, he was always a brilliant defender, a brilliant turnover or jackler, the ball getting, getting in over the ball and winning possession, winning turnovers. He's still got that in his game, but he now links really well. He attacks, he carries, yeah. six, and he'll and enjoy one. the next six 30 minutes one. or so. Six and one. Lives on the coast in Wales at Mumbles, enjoys the walks along the beach with his wife and kids. And Ross Ford again having a, a new lease of life this afternoon for them. Johnny Gray. Pack sets up the mall again. Yep, it was uh, Big Nim Sadzi who was lifting Richie Gray's leg up. Please be and you can't do this. Here he goes. Careful, Watch him. He comes, detaches, then he lifts Please that left leg up. Yep. It's frustration, isn't it? He's trying anything in order to stop them all. The assistant referee helps out in this case. 
Richard Gray makes sure he sees it. And that's that, that that's a, a perfect example of discipline. When things aren't going well, you've got to keep your discipline and put your body weight in an effective position, an effective part of the mall, not creeping to the side. It's such an obvious penalty to give away 10 metres from your own line. Well, they're going to replace two of their big names. That's uh, Mariashvili and Brek Vaz. I think number one have taken all three off. The whole front row's coming off. This much vaunted scrummaging pack of Mariashvili, Brek Vaz, and Chilachava. Going to replace Akashvili, Alashvili, and Kubriashvili. Again, three good players coming on from Toulon, Brive, and Montpellier. Longer ball. Didn't get to Barkley. Better break, Watson's over it though. Still kept by Georgia. Lobzanidze up into the uh, early evening sky. It'll be a Scotland line-out. It's good reaction by Georgia to the, the steal of the line-out. Oh, she has really the, the profit just came on. We just watched him come on, got the ball, run hard, committed Finn Russell, and a good clearance kick. Six but again, seven. it's hand in possession back to Scotland. Six. Georgians want. Nine, nine. Use it. A bit more of a forward orientated game. It's uh, Lobza needs it into the midfield. Long pass out to this big centre. Sharekadze. Sharekadze to Todua. Todua being tracked back by Maitland. Bit more zip about the Georgians. Kaviri Kashvili, the uh, full back. Big white line of defence comes up to meet this attack. Taco. In there, along with Tyler Svili, the number 20. Oh, looked to be a little bit of obstruction there, but a break by the Georgians. Much more ball. They've now had 22% of possession. The Scots on 78%. Gorgodza. Gorgodza trying to just use that abrasion of his, this big six foot five, 18 stone. Sometimes second row, sometimes number eight, sometimes six or seven. Georgia, pick and go, up to the Scots, 22. Just the tackle. In there is Mikhail Tadze, he's back on. Picked up by Alkazashvili. Bit more abrasion. The backs have it, Mikhail Tadze. Oh, better play. This is a Sharikadze, Sharikadze up to Kirikashvili. Kirikashvili there into Bennett. Hamish Watson's over the ball. Penalty to Georgia, much better by the Georgians. That was much better, wasn't it? Good handling, good ball retention. And they were holding their width. That time you see Kirikashvili, sorry, right out in the ch wide channel, right in the touchline, stretching the defence of Scotland. And as it comes over, I think it's Alex Dunbar just floods over the ball. He works really hard initially to tee in his feet, but once he loses his body weight forward, the penalty is quite rightly given to Georgia. But we've seen the big player, the, the star man, Gorgodze, within that phase carry, and he made five or ten yards with an abrasive carry, and the knock-on effect in that for his teammates and the Georgian supporters here is obvious. Do you know there's plenty of support here from the Georgian fans? Yep. Four million population. Two, two replacements. And that looks as though uh, still got stud problems for Johnny Gray. It's a bit of power going through those studs, isn't it? And you see that the stats for the carries in the second half, Georgia, and that underlines that they've had more possession certainly than they had in the first half. They made more meters as well. And I was just thinking the Dr. James Robson will have used some very delicate operating instruments before, but maybe not pliers. Set of pliers, DIY. Johnny opted to do it himself. You see a change as that Fraser Brown coming on for Ross Ford. There's Johnny back on his feet, but his studs back in check. They'll be needed here. And George was up for a scrum from the penalty. Well, that's Lamidza who came on early on. He's now on for the big number eight, bit sadza. He wants to be in this space. Yeah. 
Domizu with that 19 at the bat there was on the bench for Japan early this month but missed the last game he's just 24 years old 25th cap today as we said earlier playing in Bézier in France Georgian scrum they'll look to try to punish the Scots if they can they inch forward it's a penalty Lamiza, Lamiza looks pretty big. Short ball inside to God Godzilla. They'll be brought back for the penalty. Little back row move off the back of the scrum. That was a nice back row move. It's an old fashioned one. I've not seen it for a few years, but it's really, really effective. Scotland actually defended it well, but this penalty had already given. Look at the number it picks and goes wide. Feeds back inside, and the ball comes back outside again to Tilly Kushvili. But it was well covered by Scotland. Penalty had already been given. Well, Rory Hughes is on for Sean Maitland, and Fraser Brown is on for Ross Ford. The Georgians will want to ask questions of this Scottish back. Here, a huge chance from the Georgian fans in front of us as this pack blasts forward. Well, they've certainly got the upper hand against Scotland. The Georgians all the way to the line picked up. It's a try. That is the second try, I think, for Lobzy Nadze, the uh, scrum half. Complete domination, and at the end of it, some well timed fisticuffs. They're just exchanging handbags. But that is a good scrum by the Georgians. And that's the you one area, on isn't it, Chris, where they've, you can't be honest and say they've dominated that phase. That's right, initially Scotland dealt with it reasonably well, but then the powers came on. They've just changed their front row, three new front rows, and this is the second scrum of two in quick succession has been very, very dominant. The control has lost a little bit by the back by Lomidzi, but they're picking up the loose. Scraps, loves yeah, Lomidzi for his second try, so sharp from the pick-up in his first try, and equally so here. Greg Lidl tries to kick it out, thinking maybe the penalty try was going to be given, but loves Lomidzi is really sharp, but that's down to the front row, and the front five power. Look at the drive coming through, they're low, they're working in unison. A bit scrappy at the end, but loves Lomidzi will take that for his second try in the afternoon. Well, this new front row of Alka Sashvili from Toulon, who is just 21 years old. Asseshvili from Breve, the new loose side prop is 29. Kubriashvili Montpelli, the tight head, he's 29. So lots of scrummaging in Georgia's back pocket. Here's Kaviri Kashvili, maybe giving Scotland a little wake up call. Just misses. Yeah, he doesn't miss many, I think Scotland now are changing the, the front rows as well. Obviously Fraser Brown's already on for Ross Ford, but Alex Allen, Murray Ball coming back on the field, and there's the try score, Lobs and Idzi. I said before he lit up Rugby World Cup as I think the second youngest player ever to play in Rugby World Cup. He then starred in the Under-20 World Cup in the same year, and I think he misses next year's Under-20s by a matter of a fortnight. So he's a young player, a huge talent. Lobs and exit, and he's got two tries this afternoon. Into the front row, the heavy brigade. They truck up to the 22, longer ball. Back in the pocket. And uh, Ryan Wilson watches it go into touch, and it'll be a line out to Scotland. On the line. Thank you. They don't know yet. Patient, patient. Scottish Park having up a little chat, five. deciding five. how many Outside guys to put in the line. They've gone with five. The short line that they'll try and free the big runners, maybe John Barkley, Alex Dunbar in the midfield here, I think. Richie Gray, and Fraser Brown no. at the back, dominating ball from the Scots. What? Up comes Barkley, Johnny Barkley at the back. Laidlaw peels back off. Russell with a long pass to Hogg. Hogg. Just entices two or three men in the tackle. Tackled by Malogur out of the ten. Break on by Seymour. Tommy Seymour 
Just uses those legs to pump Fun away. Fight, good, good defense contest. by Lomidze, the big number 19. Play on, play on. Good contest. So Godza just stands and invites the contact. Inside, inside. Fullback Kviri Kashvili, there's another injury outside now. to him. He's just inside the 22 and an injury by the looks of it to uh, Watson. Play goes on. What no, a game four, we've four. had today. Good break by the big number five, Nemadza. This is his partner in crime, Mika Tadza. Ryan Wilson trying to slow it up. Lobza needs a much more play from Georgia now. The big replacement is Lomidze, the number 19. Here's this electric scrum half, parceled up in the tackle. In comes Malugaradza, the 10, picked up again by Lomidze. The two props think about going in. Let him go, let him go. Let him go. Tilly Kashvili. Blast on, this is what the Georgians are good at. Look at the build of Kubriashvili. Mikhail Tadza. Better play by the Georgians again. Lobzanidze. Kubriashvili. Johnny Gray thinks, then takes his hands out the pocket. Lobzanidze. Fly up of a tackle. Has to go to ground. Gogodza provides help. Lobzanidze. Mikhail Tadza, the shorter ball, halfway through the gap. Good play by Tsiklauri. Tackle! Tackled again. Tries to get the ball back, he does. Lobza needs it to Gogodze. Gogodze brought down well, offloads in the tackle. Malaguradze. Georgians up to 31% possession now. He'll trap by your own players. Two forwards either side. Half break. Lobzanidza, Gorgodza, Finn Russell. Now oh, that's Rory Hughes, hangs onto one leg. In goes the big centre miss, said Lidze. Inside, lovely little pass to Chilasvili. Lobzanidze. It was Malaguradza. Oh, and the Georgians have just knocked that on. Could this be a counter attack? Bennett, Bennett thinks. Bennett's got men outside him. Gives it to Hughes, Rory Hughes. Laidlow waits, the ball slower than he would like. Looks up, he has Murray Lowe. Lowe plows on. Fraser Brown protects. Laidlow goes left, left to Bennett. Mark Bennett, he's one on one. Bennett though, Hammett stays on his feet. Bennett does well. Oh, was he dumped? Laidlow looks up right there, lots of straggling Georgian players. It was Barkley. Barkley, this is Wilson. Oh, and that's just a loose ball from the Scots. Gray's there to try to turn it back over. Great piece of action. Well, it was over 17 phases by Georgia, and then Scotland did a counter-attack. Georgia still fighting for space, but have conceded possession by a quick chip here. And Scotland have numbers on the left. Fraser Brown. With Murray Lowe, the Georgians just slower to get back. Laidlaw again changes that direction, gives it hard to Ryan Wilson. Ryan Wilson so far has made 12 ball carries. He's made 30 metres ball carrying. Laidlaw ever present. Skips out, as, as is this man. Look at that, he's handed off about four players. Wilson again, ball alive. Bennett, Bennett looks as though he's going to be scragged. By the big centre, Mishledza, and it's a penalty to Georgia. It's Good defence. Oh, wow. What a phase of play. What a phase of rugby. It must have been near on four minutes. Look at the players strewn across the ground. The Georgians can hardly get up. They had 17 phases, as I said. Then Scotland had a counter attack. A wonderful break by Mark Bennett. Set free by Alex Allen up the short side. And this is where it all came to a shudder and halt. Mitchell Lindsay with a tackle on Mark Bennett, and then the Scottish players going off their feet. An incredible phase of play. That's Alex Allen's soft hands to Matt Bennett up the short side, and he comes off his left foot. He breaks this tackle, stays in his feet, but couldn't get his hands away. And it's got to recycle the ball, move it to the right-hand side, I think, and then eventually 
Ryan Nelson was tapped there, but that was an incredible phase of play. The players will be feeling it. It was physical, it was fast, it was a high quality as well. What a treat these spectators are having at Rugby Park Great this game. afternoon. Great game. Great standing game. On. Yeah, that's Nemzadze, the Bristol player, who is going off. He's being replaced, we think, by Shalva Suchashvili. Flanker, who Captain Georgia during their summer tour, he scored a try in the 22-21 win over Scotland A way back in 2010. The number 19, Lomidze, has made an impact. The big number eight with a shaven head. He's uh, he's carried well. He's linked well. As you can see, Georgia enjoyed far more possession, not only than they did themselves in the first half, but almost double that. With Scotland in the second half. They're looking Alcalas. much more comfortable. Alcalas really his throwing is marked and read by Barkley. Finn Russell sends the uh, Georgians mark that, please. into their own dead ball area. It's been two teams trying to play rugby. It's been outstanding. The uh, when Scotland has scored five tries. Georgians have had two, we've had different types of tries, we've had a lot of excitement, it's been physical. Georgia, now we Georgia just Georgia. haven't had now enough possession, we keep beat. saying it. And the more they've had in the second half, the more impressive they've looked. This is a nice... Yes, please. Ryan Wilson. Laidlaw, Russell, look at him putting his hands up to pull the ball in behind to Hogg. Hogg just holds on to that a little bit long. Half rescued. Yeah, a little bit clumsy at the right-hand side there between Hogg and Seymour, but those two have been outstanding 18, this afternoon one. yet again. So electric with the ball in hand. This is a good way to say hello here from Udu Kibriashvili on Montpellier on the left. 13. <laughs> there we are. Still on Fraser Brown, yeah. just to make sure he's there. I'm not entirely sure he was going to take the quick drop out himself anyway. <laughs> Kubriash really. You know, most of these Georgians are very experienced from the 97 caps of Kiri Kashvili at full back to the replacement who's just come on, 62nd cap. Good run by Tsilashvili. Longer ball to. Kiri Kashvili. And uh, Rory Hughes just creating a problem. He's offside, though, says the referee. The Georgians, what do you make of them? They're trying to play out from their own well, half, aren't they? It's similar to what we said in their game last week in Samoa. That, that, and it's very difficult. They didn't have a lot of possession at all in the first half. But the second half, they played more rugby. Here they are attacking from a set piece line out wide in the left hand side, right over to the right hand side. Rory Hughes quite rightly penalised for coming around the side and kicking it. But the, 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 the tip on plays, they're, they're adding an extra pass to the attack, they're attacking short sides, they've got numbers in the line and options to carry rather than just off, you know, this come half off, being really direct. And I think it suits them much yeah, better. Certainly improved as the game's gone on. This is Badri Alkazashvili from Toulon. The number 17 is Asesh really from Breve. And it's a bit of a difficult one though for the scrum half. He's really impressed though, the number nine. He's been dynamic, he's been he's made ground. Physical as well for a reasonably small stature guy. Go gods it was. Lobs and needs there. Little chip through by Malagaradza. Will this jump up? Oh, it doesn't quite work for them. Rory Hughes gets it for the Scots. Scotland then with a chance to build. Laid low, back to Hogg. Hogg with that big, spiralling boot of his. Sorry, sorry. Todua. And it's a beautiful setting here tonight. The floodlights are on, the uh, sky is red. And we've got a great game. Yeah, this is a chip through. Not for me. Just from Malagaradza. Mitchell Lizzie just can't take it under a bit of pressure by Alex Dunbar. But it's another example of how George are trying to play this game. They're identifying the space just over the, the top of the defensive line. 
There's the view tonight. Kilmarnock just southwest of Glasgow. Looking onto the hills at Arran, the snow capped peaks. And it's just above freezing, and this all weather pitch has been brilliant this, today, as of some of these players. It's been a great product, isn't it? Played quickly, played aggressively, the tries. It's been hard fought as well. Sometimes you can look at the scoreboard and think 38 16, Scotland have had it all their own way. Well, they, they had to work for the tries in the first half against a determined defence, and some of them are out of the top drawer. Georgia, well, they've not given up yet, they're fighting all the way. Brown, Wilson. Number five, across the line out, playing the man. Johnny Gray. Well, a lot of these forwards do Let this, don't do. they? They have a sneaky little run through the line out. You clearly make contact. So Johnny, Johnny Gray just being pinged for contact. And this is this could be a, a very as we have another look at Johnny Gray running right across oh, yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> I think he got his, That's terrible. He got his timing wrong a little bit. A look at his gas to for the referee for getting your timing wrong. <laughs> uh, but this is this is a. Uh, I was just about to say, if this is a good kick, it's not. It, it's not. It's gone too far. But if that was a good kick, that puts a lot of pressure on Scotland to defend the drive ball. But that's a big, big mistake. No, 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 Quite no, just cloudy. I'm not there. That was either. an opportunity for Georgia to to make the last 15 minutes or so a little bit more interesting. It's good to see Finn Russell back, considering what happened to him late last season and over the summer. He's come back to. Great form too. Well, Nathan Hines, the big man, the yellow T-shirt there, complaining. Well, pointing up the pitch. It may be worth checking this because it's whether the Georgian's foot has to be over the line and touching the ground when he catches the ball, or did he catch the ball first then take his foot over to do it? Benefit of the doubt. Scrum or line out? Scrum or line out? I think we'll take the scrum. Scrum up, sir. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Centre field scrum. Options either side, but I think they'll they'll keep the ball on the back of this scrum if they can get dominant dominance for as long as possible. And look for Lobs and Edsley attacking one side or the other. It just shows you, Chris, these three replacement front rowers are the hooker's getting his second cap, but the two props are on that on their twenty-sixth and forty-fifth caps. And they're still in their 20s. You, 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 that number you, you, 18, you can see there, Kubriashvili, is still sorry, 29, sorry. and the props, well, we they get better with age. We, we mentioned what their death would be like if you look at the challenge into that Six Nations, extended Six Nations, Five. and so far it's been outstanding. I'd add to that Lomidze, the number 19, the number 8 position as well. He's been outstanding, so their death is good. And they're making a fight of us. What about a straight question to you? What would you do about a team like Georgia? that's ranked above the Italians and not in the Six Nations. In terms of inclusion in the Six Nations? Patience well, I think they goal. deserve an opportunity. Um, I, I think it would be sad to see anybody dropping out in the Six Nations. I think it's a really good product. I think Georgia would be a good addition to it. Um, and the, the, their argument is they just want more opposition against... Uh, more more uh, opportunities to play Tier 1 opposition. They've got that here. And they have to show up well to fight their corner. Penalty to Georgia. Lomidze, it was two. Lobbrzanidze, the scrum half. Michelidze, the number 12. Still penalty advantage. You're right. This number 19, Lomidze, has been in everything since he's come on the pitch. Still advantage. Lobbrzanidze at nine. Looks up as a pocket of three heavyweight forwards. They make a good six, seven metres. Yes. Lobbrzanidze again. The tight game suits the Georgians. Good defence by Scotland. Little chip through, charge down though. It's going to be penalty advantage. They'll bring it back. There's a lot to the Georgian game that is to be admired. But it's and it's built on the scrum, isn't it? As you see, a replacement front row. On this side of the scrum, he'll have to go. Oof. And there's a warning as well for Murray Lowe. To Murray Lowe, any more penalties, and he'll have to be go. Meaning a yellow card and a sin bin. So yeah, the the, the play's built on the. Their set piece, obviously. And I'll be pretty surprised if they don't take another penalty. Uh, it's come here, but it looks like they're going to the line out. I'm, I'm surprised at that. Yeah, I think you have a penalty, and now what? The line out has been effective, the drive's been good, but the scrum, I think, has been more dominant than the line out. 
and a kick like that you want to be closer to the line it's it's okay for Malagaradze but they should be looking to get that five meters from the goal line Kiriri Kashvili it was with the kick it's a five-man line out longer well read by Bartley Johnny Gray's back to track helped by his brother Richie Gray Laidlaw barks instructions he's got Finn Russell straight behind him taken quickly Lomazidze Kviri Kashvili long kick and that's a mistake he's handed the ball to the Scots who might want to try to punish the Georgians yeah they'll be frustrated with that one I think it goes back to their decision to kick to the, the the touch to hit the line I thought they would take a that scrum as I say and then from the counter attack from Hogg's kick clearance kick Georgia took a quick line out Five. and then a disappointing return over the kick to straight touch this is an opportunity for Scotland who haven't had a lot of possession in the last four or five minutes to to get a good set piece of possession and launch another attack well you and I were talking in the first half about 90% possession for Scotland it's now down at 61% Hogg has made the most meters, he's made 115. Tackle. Laidlaw looks up, has those ever present forwards, Fraser Brown in behind again. Finn Russell with a miss out pass, just knocked on. It'll be pulled back for the scrum unless there's advantage and a couple of mistakes just uh, creeping in to what's been a great game. Yeah, that's a Dunbar, they just couldn't hold the ball. Yeah, it's frustrating. But what he's actually trying to do there really well is straighten the line, Alex Dunbar. And it looks like a... Yeah, he's a bit frustrated, of course. It's a, it's an obvious knock-on. But you see from this angle, he's actually trying to straighten up, come back towards the ball, which yeah. makes it a harder catch to fix the defender. And he's also trying to catch in his hands as well, which is a much more difficult skill to catch with your hands coming back towards the ball. He should be executing that, but I can understand uh, his frustrations, but I can understand what he's trying to do there as well. Well, you can see the shape of some of these scrummages. Could be Ashvili there. Number 18, Gogodza joining in the background. There he is, just not happy with his right elbow. Only took up rugby, age 17. Was a basketball player. Signed on a big money deal to Toulon from Montpellier. Very, very capable player. The two greys have been good today. I think Andy Nichols picking the man of the match as we look at this beautiful picture from Kilmarnock. Red sunset, floodlights on, packed stadium, lots of Georgian fans. You come to the left. Thank you. He wants to go in there. Good opportunity for Georgia here. A right hand scrum. They'll probably look to do someone involved in the number eight. They'll maybe use a blindside winger as well, who's, who's looking at this short side. Six Lowry. Big moment for Ali Price. He's on. The lad from Kings Lynn on for his first cap. He's beaten more defenders than any other scrum half in Pro 12. He's coming on for Greg Laidlaw in a minute. We'll see him in a second. But Georgia then with a scrum. It's come up. They'll have to do this again. Yeah, that's good referee. So often we, we can be critical of referees looking to end a scrum too soon or give a penalty one way or the other just to, to move on to the next scrum. But that was good refereeing. Both from those popped up just under the pressure so it's quite rightly the reset both sides came up at the same time come on you must have heard me <laughs> crouch Boing. set ah! it's been much better for georgia in the second half but they still made 110 tackles to Scotland's 55 punishing scrum by the Georgians they really if there's one phase that they've dominated it has been the scrum well he did warn them didn't he it I told you on the last scrum you didn't stay square off you go <laughs> well there's no he point arguing gone. because well, he's been warned and that's a Milo leaving the pitch he will take no further part, so for the next 
six odd minutes it's going to be down to 14 men for Scotland as you see John he was warned if there's another penalty this come on a tight head side he'd have to go for a card have another look at it here that's my low the far side yeah he's popping up number 18 you see his head out his back up it's all about whether you drive straight. Oh, great. Oh, he here. will argue there, loose head is yeah. coming in round the corner. Yep. I think that's, but, uh, that's not the way the referee sees it. Yeah, I think that's what Greg Laidlaw was saying. As you see Greg Laidlaw leaving the field, another inspirational performance by those two players. Greg Laidlaw, Johnny Gray. Outstanding. There's Ali Price on at number nine, keen scuba diver. Great games for in the Pro 12. Kings Lynn Bourne, as we said. And on as well as Grant Gilchrist in Scotland, just trying to take a, the sting out the tail of this Georgian counter. Barkley appealing to the uh, assistants. Dunbar, Dunbar with a long kick. Todua's back there, or is it Todua? He looks inside, has uh, Lomazidze with him. Not a very convincing up and under. Taken well. He, he's been electric, the scrum half. He's been one of the players of the game. Good pick up, too, by Tilesvili. Lomazidze at nine has had an incredible game. Not on the ball, let it go now. Georgia sneak halfway through with their goal, Godza. And it was out to Bigadza. This is better play by Malaguradza. The long pass out to Lomaziza. The little number nine darts in. Oh, he could have given the ball tackle. He's been dragged into touch. Great attacking play by this Georgian team that's woken up again. Good defence by Scotland. Yeah, it's Finn Russell and a great tackle. Lomaziza. I think Lomaziza was looking for his hat trick. This is a little bit more afters. His passions are still running high, which is good to see. Good play by the Georgians. Gorgodze noticing the, the space right over the top of the ball. And Begadze tries to get the off with it. Doesn't go to hand, but the react quickest. Malagaradze throws the long ball over the top to where Lobzanidze is now played on the right wing. And there he should pop it inside. Finn Russell reads it. And with the help of Rory Hughes and Axton Barna drive him to touch. We haven't talked much about the Scottish defence, but it's been a good defence. They've not let the Georgians make too much ground. Good take by Gilchrist. Under five minutes left of what's been an enthralling competition. And Scotland with a drive, the white jerseys ploughing ahead. Price. He's got a good crisp service, he takes the quick one, does Ali Price. Ali Price off up this left wing, has Hughes inside, Rory Hughes. Great little pass, looks inside for Hawk. He has speed to bump. Oh my goodness, a try from just about their own line, absolute poetry here at Kilmarnock. Great break by Price, finished off by that man with pace to burn. Brilliant, brilliant score by Scotland. The quickness of Ali Price to take the quick tap and then the awareness of Rory Hughes to support, what really, really hard to support. And then as the Georgians go back, it was Stuart Hawke who was fighting so much hard, but on the defence on the inside. Here's Ali Price, he knows he can take that quickly, he knows the Georgian offside. He then has the awareness to time his pass perfectly to draw a lob to Nidzi. Rory Hughes, calm under pressure, a full pace, finds Stuart Hawke who dives over McConnell for his second try. It's the support, firstly from Hughes, then from Hogg, who's had to run all the way from his own line. That's a good try by Scotland. It's and a what a fitting try. way to end the scoring this evening, if this is indeed the end, Hogg. Don't underestimate the role of Rory Hughes in that, staying calm under pressure at full pace, distributing the pass at the right time, and Hogg diving over for his second of the afternoon. What a finale, what a finish, what a try. Do you know, two years ago they were talking about how Scotland couldn't score tries. And now the man that's helping them to score tries is off to Montpellier to coach some of these Georgian players.
good attempt from Finn Russell just to the right. We've had a great game today, haven't we? Brilliant. Absolute standing. And, and here's Ali Price just on. Two or three good passes and then this, a big impact in the game. And his first cap, Rory Hughes, calm under pressure. Stuart Hogg, <laughs> he's had two run-ins. They'll enjoy those. Well, done a little bit more than run them in, but he's, at least he's had that, that last 10 minutes to team 10 metres to savour that feeling. Tommy Seymour, Ali Price, who just kicked that try off, Fraser Brown. Price, Gray, Russell left footed. See Cloudy. Onside player here. Oh, Richie Gray knew what he was doing there. Johnny Gray, rather. This is uh, Hogg again. Hogg just trying to make sure. Just less than a minute to go in this, uh, what's been the enthralling competition? Todua. Todua right footed. It's going to be a stop. line out. Thank you. This game hasn't stopped. Seymour. Good shield by Barkley. Price thinks of going right, goes left instead. Richie Gray from Toulouse. Lots of, you can tell it's coordinated, isn't it? What a fitting way to end this match. Please, thank you. Price. Allen. Price. He's got Finn Russell if he wants him. There's Russell. Russell with a little dink through. Oh, this battle nearly bounced. It's going to be a bit of Georgian ball as time just ticks away at the end Not of a pulsating match where Scotland have deserved their win. It's been the best record by a Scotland team Thank in a you. calendar year. First time they've won two matches on the trot. It at home since 2010. Russell. Russell. Hogg wisely left it. Hughes, they're desperate for another try. Time's ticking away. Good block by Horn. Grant Gilchrist. Gilchrist goes up himself. Richie Gray helps to blast over Ali Price. It's interesting the way Finn Russell puts his right hand up there just to ask for the ball. Good run by Allen, who's been everywhere since he came on the pitch. Price. Barkley. Gilchrist. Another clean ruck. They've be, produced a lot of ball. That's nearly a minute of extra time. Finn Russell, delayed pass, knocked on. And that will probably be the end of the match. It is indeed as the referee blows for the final whistle. And the uh, handshakes go all around. And an amazing game with so many tries. And there's a Fraser Brand just calmly getting to the end of this match. And there's the man of the match, Ryan Wilson, has picked by Andy Nichol shaking hands. He's, what's he done? He's carried the ball 16 times. He's made 53 metres, six tackles, and uh, conceded one penalty. But Ryan Wilson, the man of the match, Scotland 43, Georgia 16. What do you make of this, Chris Patterson? It's been a game where the Georgians came here with a chance of winning in their opinion. Well, the Georgians have had a very successful season. They've only lost one since the Rugby World Cup last year. They came here in high hopes after beating Samoa last week, but they were blown away by Scotland, who were accurate, they were aggressive. Their set-piece on the main was very, very good. The defence was up to it when it had to be. And the big thing was they looked after the ball and they scored tries. Six tries, all different, some direct through the middle, other ones with spark and X-factor talent. And Scotland have had a very, very successful November Test Series, in my opinion. Two wins, one defeat by a single point to Australia. This team are in good shape and look forward to the Six Nations. The game of two halves. Scotland had 86% possession in the first half. The Georgians had 58% possession in the second half. It's the same story when it came to territory, but there's these Georgian players. I think we know Gogods are there and his teammates have plenty in reserve up front. And good abrasive backs too, but they just couldn't put enough together today, aside from scrum time, to give the Scots the kind of challenge they would want should they ever come to the Six Nations. Yeah, they, they, they couldn't get their hands on the ball in the crucial early part of the game and ultimately couldn't slow Scotland's possession down. So Scotland will be very, very happy.
with the way they've played and exactly the result. There's Naria Shvili, the loose head prop, Tommy Seymour uh, played his part today. It all started, didn't it, with that try from uh, Love Zanita when we thought, boy oh boy, it's going to be different. Anyway, let's cross to Ailey, who's with the man of the match. We're Ryan, a little bit more comfortable than the last two matches in terms of scoreline. How much fun was that to play out there today? Yeah, it was good fun. It was hard work. We knew, uh, you know, we knew how tough they'd be. And they came out, they put some big shots in. There's some big boys out there and they're a tough team. Um, but yeah, great to get a great winning in front of a great crowd. We, you knew they would be tough opposition, but what does it say about Scotland that you were able to be so clinical against them? Uh, you know, we've, we've been working on it. Those first two games against Australia and Argentina have been so tight and we've had a good run of games there. And things have just started to come together today and uh, tribute to the hard work that the boys are putting. Three matches, two wins, a very, very narrow defeat to Australia. Sum it all up. We've plenty more to work on, but there's some brilliant stuff there and we want to take it into a massive Six Nations this year. All the best, Ryan. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thanks, Harry. Greg Laidlaw just come alongside me there. Just didn't see you sneaking in there, Greg. Uh, big smile on your face today. A very nice win for Scotland. Yeah, it was a nice win. We were delighted. We scored 43 points and a lot of good tries against a, a tough and never-improving Georgian side. And brilliant for us to get a, a second win in this campaign and uh, in front of a great crowd today. What are the biggest positives for you, not just this afternoon, but over this whole Test Series? Probably our attack and the way we're scoring points and causing teams' problems. Uh, look back to the Australian-Argentina game. And, We've done a lot of great things in there. We're probably still a bit annoyed about that Australia game, if we're being honest. We, we feel as though we've, we've done enough to win it, or certainly we should have done enough to win it. Um, and then well, I think our defence has taken a step forward as well. We've not conceded too many points. So all those things to work on, as Ryan said, we're a bit of a sticky patch here in the middle, um, and we just need to clean that up. Well done, Greg. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.